start off with Casey Holdell with trailblazers.com. Uh, Dame, as someone who's obviously made a name for himself scoring in the fourth quarter, I- I'm curious if there's anything special about the fourth. The reason I'm asking why is Carmelo shoots a, a much better percentage in the fourth quarter than he does regularly in the game. So I'm curious if you might have a, a theory on that, considering you're kind of an expert on that. I mean, I just think, I mean, I always say he's a Hall of Fame player. And, you know, we, every game we giving him a ball for him passing somebody on the charts, you know, for uh, scoring history in the league. And, um, you know, he's done it for so long. And he knows that at that time of the game, you know, the best players rise to the occasion. And I think it's a mental thing where um, you know how good you are, you know what you're capable of. and it's an opportunity to rise, you know, and to, and to come through and to show why you are the level player that you are. And um, that's what was frightening for other teams, you know, when they up against a guy like that. And I think a player of, of his caliber is, you know, when those times come, he's trying to prove that, you know, that these are the moments where players like me step up. And regardless of what happened in the rest of the game, like this is where I can hurt you. And I'm always a threat. Um, and that's the way I think, you know, regardless of what's happened over the course of the game or, um, or how I'm shooting or how I'm feeling. Like when the game is on the line, I take pride in, you know, being able to, to come through at that time regardless. And um, I think he, obviously with how many points he scored and what you just said about his, his shooting percentage, I think it's obvious that, that he sees it that way too. Thanks, Dan. Next question is coming from Aaron Fentress with the Oregonian. Hey, Damian, the, they took it to the Pelicans the other night. They have a new coach. They have a new lease on life, but they're still 8-30. and 30. Did you feel you guys didn't play to your potential against the caliber of team that this is tonight? Or was it just a situation where, hey, they're an NBA team too, they played well? I mean, I think we we play well in stretches. But um, I think something that we've struggled with all season long is being able to sustain that level of focus and uh, that level of, you know, just high, high quality play. You know, we'll do it for a quarter and then we'll have half of the next quarter where we do it. And then the last six minutes, it'll be a huge drop off. And then we'll do it in the, first part of third, or we won't do it the first part of the third, then we'll close the third outright, and then we'll struggle in the fourth quarter. So I think it's just been, um, we played well in stretches. We just haven't been able to, to sustain it and do it consistent enough. And I think um, it's part of what you said as well. Like the other night, they just blew New Orleans out in New Orleans. And, you know, they come in feeling confident. They feeling better after a game like that. They on their home floor, uh, regardless of it being fans or not. They they playing in they uh, they comfort zone and um, they play with confidence and they're NBA team. You know they going they gonna be able to get things done when they feel good about themselves. And you know it's not our job to go out there and feel like we above the competition and oh well, they shouldn't be in the game with us or whatever. You know they we lace them up the same way they lace them up. They got talented guys and um, for us the most important thing is just pulling out a win and. Um, I feel like a, a team that uh, a lesser team would have come in here and once we got in a dog fight like that, we would have let it slip. But I think I, it shows our growth and the difference in our team this year from last year where this might have been a game where we let it slip and we go into the hotel, you know, pissed off. But we got it done. Um, and we just got to make sure we tighten up uh, some of the things that we didn't do well tonight and come back and try to sweep this trip. Thank you. Next question is coming from Joe Becker with K2. I think you're muted, Joe. There you go. Yeah, um, Dan, you talk about how much work you put in and to be at an elite level. And here Carmelo is at 36, and you know what it takes to be a star. How impressed are you with Carmelo that his age, after being off a year, comes back and he's still in great shape and can still get the job done? I mean, it's very impressive. You know, I think when you get to that age, um, I think it gets harder for guys year in and year out, you know, to come into training camp, to travel, uh, just the, the wear and tear of an NBA season uh, on your body is tough. And the older you get, it gets harder and harder. So for him to be that age and uh, to be able to withstand that uh, last year when he came back and then, you know, obviously he's playing really well this year. Um, but then to be doing that off of a, a year layoff, basically, is even more impressive because usually it's more likely for a guy at that age to be like, you know what, I can't get myself back going. I can't get back into the swing of it at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but he jumped right in, you know, and was starting and playing big minutes. And he he changed our team last year. So uh, for him to come back this season and to be, you know, in even better shape 
for his mind to be even more right um, and for him to be coming through the way he's been coming through for us, dealing with all these injuries has been um, very impressive and amazing to see. Cool. Thanks. Next question is coming from Christo Saltes with Sport DNA. Hello, Dame. Congratulations on the win. How important for your, uh, for your team is to respond after a tough loss against the Suns? And also, what is the most enjoyable part for you personally to have a teammate like Carmelo? Uh, it's, it's huge for us to be able to, you know, come back from a game like that where we're playing against a really good team, which is, is not, it's not hard for you to get up for a good team. Um, so I thought our team played well. We just let it slip. And usually a game like today um, is the one where you come out and, you know, you lay an egg or you come out and you don't have the same level of focus or intensity. Um, so I like the way we came out and started the game. Uh, obviously, you would like to see us do some things better, you know, uh, quarters two through four. But um, I like that, you know, we showed some maturity. We came in. It wasn't a perfect game, but we got the job done. Um, and that, like I said before, that shows growth from the team that we, you know, we were last season. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to continue to grow and, and push in the right direction. And I think coming off a loss against Phoenix at home in a tough game and bouncing back and getting this one, even though it was was another tough one on the road against a team that was feeling really good about themselves, it's, it's a good win for our team. And I mean, I don't know what else I can say about uh, Melo. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be on the floor with him. Um, it's, it's a certain level of comfort knowing that you got a guy like that who's done it for so long um, out there down the stretch and just over the course of the game and in the locker room with you. So, um, you know, we love have, having his presence and him as a player on this team. All right. Thanks, Dan. We'll wrap there.